Hello Internet! I'm Udo ADHD. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about whatever I want, whenever I want, and I am starting to get addicted to these interviews with Ramit Sethi. He interviews married or engaged couples and talks to them about their finances, and oftentimes he digs a little bit deeper. Things are a little bit more than just dollars and cents, and Sometimes they infuriate me, okay? And I'm like getting addicted to reacting to them. So I enjoyed my last one so much that I wanted to try again. And this time my own hubby is watching so I can get his reaction too. He does not want to be on camera. So um, you just might hear him in the background. So same deal. I'm playing it at actually 1.25 speed. Um, let's find out what's going on with this couple. Oh, and also, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do, if you vibe, and make sure you like the video, if and when you like it. All right, let's go. I don't know, it's kind of not a good answer. Sometimes now when we talk about money, I feel like I'm stepping into a, like a landmine. I'm making more than Nate is now, but he's going to be making a lot more than me. Oh, so it's a it's a gradation. <laughs> yeah. So what's the number where in your mind it changes? I've never even thought about that, to be honest. Because it's not a number. It's not a number. And it's like, I love Nate. He's my person. We're engaged and I'm thrilled, you know. So why is it so hard for me to do this? Meet Nate and Serena. They're both in their late 20s. They are engaged and they have a fascinating perspective on money. Serena was raised the daughter of immigrants. And for most of her 20s, she felt poor living in New York City. She's only recently gotten a higher paying job. She now makes about $80,000 a year. And she has some very strong opinions on how money should be spent in their relationship. Nate makes $45,000 a year. He's a resident, but in a couple of years, he's gonna be a doctor. And at that point, his salary will increase dramatically. Now, the crux of the conversation today happens around different expectations. Serena thinks that money should be spent and distributed a certain way. Nate is just too busy going to work to even really want to talk about it. So stick with me as I talk with Nate and Serena. And before we go on, I wanna mention two important things. First off, starting today, I have added videos to ad. our podcast. Wait, That's right, it means instead of just today's episode with Nate, some unexpected moments. So head on over to my YouTube channel. I am at Ramit Sethi on YouTube. Click subscribe and watch today's episode on video. The second thing I have is a request for you. In the show notes today, I have a little survey link. I'd like to know more about you and everyone who listens to this podcast mm -hmm. so I can find out. And now, Nate and I are currently planning the trip. Or, slower? Uh, or uh, we've done most of the planning. Yeah, it's 1.25, so. But we're going on a trip next month to see my family in Asia um, for the first time ever, uh, not just since the pandemic. Uh, I've been many times, but uh, he has not. So this is a really big deal for me. And um, pretty much from the beginning, Nate said, I cannot afford this trip. We're really going to have to wave a magic wand in order for this to happen. So I uh, ended up fronting a lot of the cost. Um, and so now um, I lent Nate about $3,000 um, okay. in order to cover his portion. And I was happy to do it. I think I didn't anticipate the, the stress it would cause me uh, to have him in debt, which I know sounds kind of weird, but I just, I'm not the kind of person that likes to have loose ends kind of just like unaccounted for. So I think having that sort of question mark has sort of caused me to be a little more nervous than I usually am about money. And most, I like specifically to answer the, your question in the last month. Also, I just want to say, I love looking at Ramit's face. It's like, I love whenever I'm watching something in real life or in a video and I'm having an internal reaction and a thought and I look at the person's face on the video and I can tell they're having the exact same thought. I love that. <laughs> so anyway, that's what's happening right now. And I don't have enough to articulate it. So let's just keep watching. I would say like the cadence of like, so when are we going to start paying this off is starting to sort of, I think, cause some issues. Have you said that out loud or is that just in your head? Oh, no, we've talked about it. It doesn't always go well. So who brought it up? Me. Jesus. It was probably something along the lines of, I know, you know, your stress about money is 
we usually are, and that's okay. But it would really help me to have an idea of when and how much we can start paying this back little by little. Nate, what do you remember about that conversation where Serena said, hey, I know you're stressed about money. When can you start paying me back? That, that's pretty much um, how it was uh, phrased in my recollection, which... And so already it's kind of weird. Um, when I was first hearing her explain, oh, I'm stressed, I don't like having loose ends, like we need to pay this back, and she's using the term we, how can we pay this back? She's making it sound like they took a payday loan or something, but she is loaning her fiancé money so that he could go meet her parents. And so already this feels weird. It feels weird. And I'm glad that Ramit went ahead and reiterated, you are paying her back. Okay, so we're not doing this we thing. Obviously, it's uh, debatable on my end when my response is, well, I don't know because of all these financial factors and I'm very, you know, constantly on the cusp of paying off credit cards every month and rent and I'm not going to know until I get paid exactly how everything's going to balance out. I feel like that's sort of unacceptable as a as a response. Um, She's like, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, it is unacceptable. Mm -hmm, thank you for acknowledging. It ends up <laughs> uh, sort of becoming the case that sort of needs an, an answer. When am I going to pay her back and how much exactly when, which uh, fits with her personality as a as a, someone who plans a lot, but um, it can, yeah, lead to arguments and things like that. Absolutely. What did it feel like to you when she asks you that question? Well, if it was once a month, I think it wouldn't bother me very much at all. It's far more than once a month. Um, How much? At least weekly, uh, mm -hmm. if not more. Um, and yeah, I feel it's, like it's, weekly is about right. Yeah. And, and at what time of the day would this come up? Probably like, are you brushing your teeth or what? Within minutes of him coming home. Yeah, I'm like, hey, how's your day? Like, nice to see you. Um, our dog will greet him by licking his face for like 30 seconds straight. Um, 10 minutes. <laughs> for a long time. And I'm already hating that this is the first thing she talks about when he comes home. I hate that. And she's doing it every week. Uh... And I'll just kind of bring it up like, hi, like, you know, there's something I kind of want to talk about, if that's okay. Um, I know you still like owe me some cash for our trip. Um, and can we talk about paying me back? I'm also, uh, I don't know what you call people who speak like her. She's the kind of person who, you can tell she's had issues being direct in the past. And so she softens, she softens things. There's something I'd like to discuss with you if that's okay. No, well, if it's not okay, it doesn't, it, it actually doesn't matter if it's okay or not. <laughs> she's going to discuss it. It's a problem. Uh, she's saying, how can we pay it back when she means, when are you paying me back? So she's using these words that soften what she's saying. So um, the reason that means something to me is because, I don't know, maybe I feel like it's pass not necessarily that you are a passive aggressive person for using that language, but that in combination with some other things is making me feel like she likely is a passive aggressive person i think maybe that's what i'm getting anyway let me know in the comments and this is totally the kind of thing that you should comment as you watch i don't mind if you're spamming <laughs> i love doing that <laughs> so i want to know your thoughts because um you know the more perspectives the better usually i respond by saying i'm i need a moment yeah please give me a moment because mm -hmm. i just it takes me a long time to switch gears after I'm coming home from work, which is my own personality and just being. Which is why I'm wondering, why does she keep doing it? Uh, like, <laughs> tell me, what do you think? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> why do you, why does she keep doing that? Like maybe the first time she does that, He's like, okay, can you give me a minute? The second time, hey, can you give me a minute? Like, she's not processing that it's not going to be effective to do that right when he comes home. Why do, you, why, why, why do you keep doing that? You know, like, 
the more they talk, the more I, I am leaning against her. I'm like leaning towards the boyfriend because uh, it's painting it's painting a picture that is kind of negative. Tired all the time. So really after that, I sort of default again to, because this is something that probably came up less than a week ago, I, I sort of default back to, well, the answer hasn't changed in the past six or seven days. I still need to sort of wait until my paycheck comes in and I know what my credit card bill is going to be. And I'm not completely in control exactly what that uh, credit card bill is part. because I need to pay for gas and do all these things. And so there are these factors that do change from week to week. So basically the eye roll, all, like that was excessive eye roll. Oh my goodness. Control of your spending. And so I think like for me and for me, that is usually how it goes. And me being me, I'm sort of like, well, things haven't changed or I don't know is kind of not a good answer. The big thing for us is like, I need to have like a plan, like some sort of idea. And it could be starting three months from now, I'll be able to give you $100 a month. That would be fine with me. I think the issue we have now is like, there is no plan. So I'm just sort of like very much in the dark. I just, I want to know why is just so important. It was $3,000 to go see your parents, to go see your parents. And I don't know. I'm wondering, did he know that he that she meant for him to pay her back? But but more crucially, why is it so like she's the way she's talking about it is so important, like as if she's going to use that money for something. And I need to understand, like, what is what is that? About where? And when I can expect to be paid back. And do I need this money right away? No, I do not. Like, I'm very fortunate to say that, you know, but uh, I think. It's so, uh, so it makes it more weird. So why are you stressing it so much? Like. It's like, I don't want the, just like, again, like the loose end of not knowing where. Uh, because what? And when. Mm -hmm. Because it's. Like, it's stressful to me, and I know it's, like, Why? definitely What's... more stressful for Nate. Hold, hold on, hold know? on. One step at a time. Come on, Ramia. What's stressful to you? Not knowing when I'm going to get paid back. Why? Why? Um. Okay, maybe stressful is not the right word, but annoying. <laughs> Why? I think is maybe more accurate because um, I think uh, it's not even, like, what if he just doesn't, like, we slowly forget, you know, and he yeah. never pays me back. I don't Why? think that's going to happen. It's just something, and Nate sort of hinted at this, but uh, I, if there's something like an item on a list, I want to be able to cross it off. Mm -hmm. And so for me, even though it's not like money that I owe somebody, which if someone Venmo's me, they're getting their money like within 30 seconds. Like I'm very good about paying people back. This, this so is your fiance. Why is it annoying to you? It's annoying to me because I feel like it is something where we, can't move forward until we cross that line. <laughs> the way me and Ramit make the exact same face. You can't move forward? What do you mean? Y'all are supposed to be getting married. Like you can't dump him until you get your money back? <laughs> <laughs> this is so... Like, the more... This is why I'm addicted to these videos, y'all. Like... The more the people talk, the more, like, concerned. And also, it makes me wonder, are we all doing this? Like, take any problem any couple or any person is having. And if somebody sits down and does something like this to help them, would it be as, like, as, ah, as I feel watching these other people? I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. But anyway, girl, what are you talking about? You can't move forward. This is bad. This is a bad start to a marriage. I'm off the list. I see. And moving forward would mean what? Go out to dinner more or save up together to go on a trip where it's not like, okay, I'm going to front this and then we'll figure it out from there. Can you go on? A he can't afford any trips. What do you mean go on a trip without having to worry about fronting him? You're always going to have to front him until he makes money. A vacation right now, if he owes you $3,000 for this trip. 
Yeah. I mean, that's what we're going to do, I think. But yeah. Okay. Could you go to dinner if he owed you a bunch of money? We do obviously go out to dinner and stuff, but it's like sort of still in the back of my mind, you know, when like the check comes or like. This is a golden moment. I'm not sure what the real issue is yet, but I can also tell that Serena doesn't really know what the issue is either. She says, nah, I think she knows. What do you think? I'm not sure either. I think she knows and she just doesn't want to actually say it because it's going to sound really bad. We can't move ahead. But when I ask her what that actually means, she says vacations and eating out, which they're already doing. I think in my 20s, I would have heard this and I would have started smiling. And then I would have gone in for the kill. I know. Hey, Y'all, I have been watching Ramit since he was... 20 something years old and absolutely he was if you've heard of uh caleb i don't know his name he's another guy he looks at people's budgets and he's always screaming at them and he has the most ridiculous people on his on his show like you only make two thousand dollars a month and you're ordering uber eats delivery every day why why are you doing that he's always screaming at them and he annoys me but Ramit was kind of like that. Like Ramit used to be like that. So like how he has grown so much. I am so impressed. I'm actually inspired. I'm literally inspired by this guy. But anyway, yeah, he's right. The younger him would absolutely start railing into them. You said you can't move forward without vacations, but you're actually already taking a vacation. So I caught you in a lie. How do you reconcile that shit? That's so <laughs> illogical. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've evolved a little bit it may be the case that serena is illogical with money but aren't we all illogical when it comes to money also i want to understand more about why she feels she can't move forward that i think is the real issue why is it vacations is there a meaning there i don't yet understand or is there some context to their relationship that i don't yet get sometimes i think it's just asking more questions and a lot of times it's just being a little bit more empathetic now, I will admit, deep down, I still love the feeling of hearing someone say something and then watching them contradict themselves 30 seconds later. I love it, too. To me, it ah. feels like finding treasure. <laughs> when you were a kid, you loved finding a quarter in the gumball machines. I loved finding logical inconsistencies. That me doesn't too. change. Babe, but you the... like that? Yes. yes, you know you like that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We're such trolls. Okay. The way I approach it has... Let me ask. It makes me feel good to know Ramit is also a troll. Arena a little bit more. Talk to me about that. So yeah. check comes. It's the, the server puts it down in the middle yeah. of the table. What goes through your mind? Well, I know just based on where we're at, based on what we usually do, like we usually split the check, which I'm fine with. Nate will treat me sometimes and is really generous about, oh, let me get you a coffee. Like, do you want anything? Um, he's great about that. And it's really sweet, especially as someone who that is not my like first way to like show uh, love in a relationship. But He's very generous in that sense. I guess what goes through my mind is I wish, you know, Nate could treat me, but one day we'll get to that point. But tonight might, might not be that point, and that's okay. But he's already but he's treating just said you. That I do treat you more often than you treat me. So that's. No, yeah, just like I know. Oh, 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 oh. It just, it just keeps getting worse. He's treating you more often than you treat him. You make double his income. And all you do is work. He's in residency. He's studying and working. She's an entitled princess. Say? She's an entitled princess. Oh. She needs to be paid back because she shouldn't have sent him the money to begin with. Mm. She should have paid for her ticket even, according to her. <laughs> We're getting somewhere. Okay. <laughs> Do you wish he treated you every time? Uh, what did she say? Oh. Okay. He just said that I do treat you more often than you treat me. So that's... No, yeah, just, I know. Okay. <laughs> do you wish he treated you every time? Um, no, but I think, you know, when the check arrives, like, of course, I want to feel taken care of. So, Nate, what would you say if you were more generous when that check came? Uh, it would probably be, uh, do you want me to cover this? Would, would probably do it. Um, the, the problem starts being if Serena were to apply, reply, yeah, that, that'd be great. I can't really afford it. Uh, so it, That's it's, kind of a problem. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. 
Uh, that's like someone saying to their partner, uh, would you like to fly in that private jet? And they're I like, yeah, sure. To. It's like, yeah. uh, well, I can't actually afford that. So that's cool. I'm glad you want to, but we're not going. Yeah. yeah, this is like a, this is a very fundamental problem. Like money is always a topic in relationships, but like something as simple as not understanding the lifestyle your partner can afford this is, it's very weird that she's not grasping this. It's very weird. This is like a very basic, like, this is something you assess, like, literally within your first date with a dude. Like, you assess what kind of lifestyle are the two of you going to have as boyfriend, girlfriend, like. Uh. So, so how can you be generous, Nate, if you can't afford the dinner? Well, it's an excellent question. And certainly I, I can afford, for on very rare occasions to, to split a dinner. It's just sort of how my financial situation is currently. There's not a lot of leeway, as, as I alluded to earlier. It's difficult for me to take any sort of financial hit in any direction um, okay. and still being solvent. And if you're like, you know, in the back of your mind, like, you know, shitting a brick over here, like, I would say, sorry, can I swear on here? <laughs> but why? Why? Why is she? This is, I don't know. I can't wait to get to the bottom of You're this. You're invited to. Welcome to. Sorry. I should have asked Go that ahead. first. No, but I think like even if you said something, you know, suppose the check comes and you say, I, you know, I know I could treat you more often and one day I'm going to and one day like I want to get to that place and I really appreciate you in the meantime. I think like the acknowledgement or appreciation of like splitting a check, not that like you need a, I don't need like, you know, a trophy for doing that. That's like pretty normal. I just think like acknowledging it or like saying like, something might might help does that make sense but why this is not a scenario where you're dating a guy who's making way less than you and and that's it and you have no idea if that'll ever change this guy is in school to be a medical doctor you know when he graduates he's going to be making like at minimum three hundred thousand dollars a year so you you don't need that reassurance. You know that's what's going to happen, and that's probably why you're even with him. So what is this? Sure. Yeah. Like I would love to. Like I would love. Yeah, that was enthusiastic. <laughs> that was a very that was a very terse response. I'm thinking my way around it a little bit. I think like hold, 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 hold. this is a great conversation. Yeah. Nate, what do you think <laughs> Serena is really saying right now? What is she saying? I know consciously, Serena, you really do believe these things that you know, the man doesn't always have to pay and stuff like this. But it does sound a little bit like with you splitting the bill, like a little bit of that should be, I, I can be more appreciative of you contributing financially to the meal for sure. But sort of underneath that, it seems like there are some sort of latent notions about that sort of, uh, you know, the, the man paying the time and things like that, which are themselves problematic, but I think they are there subconsciously. I don't mean to be wishy-washy, I think it's hard and I'll be the first person to say that I'm sort of, I think, trying to have my cake and eat it too. I mean, why don't we just invert the whole thing and see what happens? Um, uh, Nate says to Serena, you know, Serena, it would be really nice if you would offer to pick up the check like a lot more of the time because actually I can't recall you ever offering. And by the way, you make a lot more money than I do. So don't you think it would be fair? Look at that big smile on Nate's face right now. Nate's got the biggest <laughs> smile. It's a conversation I've seen the entire happens. time. It's happening. Well, let's have the conversation yeah. right now. Let's just flip the whole thing. And like... I think, I don't think anybody here, like on the video and myself included and my husband included, we don't have an issue with the concept of the man paying for the date. But, you know, this is a situation where it just, it literally does not make sense. Like her expectations do not make sense. So anyway, let's see what she says. We'll think and see what happens. Because we can't be wishy-washy about these really important yeah. things which are causing conflict once a week minimum. Okay, mm -hmm. so Nate, go ahead, take it and run. Have the conversation. So, Serena, it'd be nice if you paid the check uh, sometimes, especially because you earn a lot more than I do. I totally understand that. Um, if I'm going to be covering us, I would just like to know beforehand. But keep in mind, like, just because I make more money doesn't mean I don't have my own student loans and bills and stuff that I pay for. So <laughs> I... I love, I love when me and Ramit make faces at the same time. Did you make a face? A yeah, you made face. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
treat you, but I can't treat you all the time. Right, which isn't really what the, the question is, you know? It, it, nobody's asking each other to be treated all the time here. No, don't yeah, think I know. That's... I just think, like, just because someone makes more doesn't, like, mean that I have... Yo, I could never be friends with this girl. I'm gonna just say that right now. If me and this girl were classmates, she would hate my guts and vice versa. Woo! If I had to do a group project with this girl... <laughs> I have like a shit ton of disposable income still. Like I have a fair bit and I'm not like worrying and stressing about day-to-day -day stuff. But hey, can I, I can I interrupt here? Yeah. I feel yes. like this is this is going in a bad direction. Please. Yeah. Um, let me ask one question and then make one observation. Are you both like highly intellectual? Too much. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I love a good intellectual. I mean, listen, I I, I have a very long academic history myself, but yeah. you two talk yourselves around the issue a lot. The paying the check is a financial question, absolutely, mm -hmm. but it's also a deeply emotional one. So, uh, Serena, you actually explicitly said the word emotional. Yeah. You said, I want this emotional, and then you didn't, I don't recall really finish the sentence. Yeah. You said the, the phrase, I want to be taken care of, which is highly emotional. Mm -hmm. So on your end, when the check comes and he offers, and you, you created this very nice script for him to say, you know, hey, I'd like to, you to acknowledge this and that, all emotional, mm -hmm. and that's totally fine. Money yeah. is emotional. But what's interesting is that when we flipped the script and he said to you, hey, I would actually like for you to pick up the check sometimes, your answer was totally intellectual. <laughs> well, sure I can, but then just because I make more money doesn't mean I don't have more expenses and yeah. I have this and that. What he's really looking for is what? Emotion. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Sorry, can baby. you just that, try to answer it this time, meet him <laughs> where he is. And and you're not off the hook either. I'm coming uh, back to you. I know, just I'm aware. Second. Nate asks me, you make more than me. I would love it if you covered this check. This is going against my nature, just so everyone knows. What nature is that? Be, what nature is that that's going against? It's going against, like, my, like, of course, like, like I said it before, I like being treated. I Girl, can you answer time, a question? No, no. People like this who, they can never just answer a question. And I was just talking to my friend about this. We were talking about guys who do this, but, you know, she is doing, she's doing exactly what we we're talking about. It's a, it's a red flag for us now. It's a complete it's a complete red flag. People who just, you can never just answer the question. It's a complete red flag to us now. Like the vast minority of the time that I treat him. Mm, okay. So I'm All just right. saying it's like it feels weird. It feels like a little weird. But I think, let's say we're doing it. I think I. <laughs> Look at the is difficulty it... in even saying this in a fake role play. For me, this is this amazing. With other couples, or are yes. we just okay? Yeah. And what I want you to access <laughs> here is that you, you even just said it, you said, this is going against my nature. Mm -hmm. yeah. What we do in these conversations yeah. is we examine our very nature. And where did it come from? Because the way that the two of you see money, <laughs> treat money, talk about money is deeply influenced by your culture, gender, uh, socioeconomic background. But I can tell he's getting excited because I think he feels like, okay, maybe we can get somewhere and I'm getting excited too, but let's see if she actually gets it. Let's see. It's not necessarily about the spreadsheet. Yeah. And that's what we have to grapple with. So in this artificial role play, which nobody's going to hold you to, he asks you and says, hey, I'd like for you to pay more. One, it would be nice because you rarely do it. And two, you actually make a lot more money than me. Go ahead and respond. Okay. I will treat you this time. I don't, oh, this is, I know. I'm... Why did you say that? <laughs> Why did you say this time like that? Tell me, think, think really hard. Why did you say that? Um, do you want to know also? Um, I, I think just because I don't want to make it a, a habit. And I know that's really mean to say. You don't want to make it a habit because? Because I don't want to pay for both of us all the time. Can I just say that nobody's expecting you to pay for both of you all the time? Yeah. Fair enough? Totally. Let's take that off the table. Okay. All right. So... This is so hard for me. Like I'm, <laughs> my heart is pounding right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. I like, I like watching. You know, I like watching the difficulty. This is quite cognitively yeah. taxing, right? Yeah. And and where do you feel it when you're feeling this? What you're feeling right now? It's in my chest. It's in this uh -huh. <laughs> right here. And it's like I love Nate. He's my person. We're engaged, and I'm thrilled. You know. So why is it so hard for me to do this? That was one of my favorite moments on this entire podcast so far. Let's lay out what's going on here. Serena and Nate love each other. They really do. I can see it watching them. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see for yourself as well. 
Serena makes more money than Nate. Nate pays for dinner more often than Serena. Serena says she wishes she felt taken care of, and she understands that Nate can't afford to always pick up the check. Now, she suggests a very lengthy script he can use to acknowledge that maybe right now he can't afford it, but hopefully at some point in the future he will, etc., etc. She wants him to acknowledge that while they are splitting the check. And when I ask them to invert the concept or flip the script, Nate asks Serena to pick up the check every so often because she rarely does, and she makes more money. And suddenly, Serena responds by saying, well, I can't always pick it up. I also have a lot of other expenses. And when I urge her to try to meet Nate where he is, it's excruciating for her to even voice the words, I will pay for the check. When I ask her why it's so difficult to say that, she herself doesn't know. Her heart is pounding. She says, Nate is my person. I love him. Why is this so hard? To me, this is such a beautiful example of how money and invisible scripts and culture and gender and communication all roll up into the way we feel about money yeah, and the way we treat so money, including how we treat money with our loved ones. <laughs> Serena is struggling, but you would also be if I asked you to do something you've literally never, ever done in your life. So let's try it again. Okay. He's asking you when he says what he says, what is he really saying to you? He's saying he wants to be taken care of just like I want to be taken care of. Yes. Yes. Okay. Meet him where he is when you respond to him. He's your person. I would love to treat you this time. I, fuck, I did it again. What is wrong with me? No, okay. okay. I would love We'll take to as treat, much time as we need. I would love to do no, it again. Then we'll do it all night. I, I would love to treat you. It would make me really happy because I know that you are generous to me in many ways. And so it would be my pleasure to pay for you. It sounds like she's trying to convince herself. <laughs> wow, that was fantastic. Nate, what did that feel like to receive? I felt excellent. Uh, it was really nice. I just like, yeah, it feels, it feels difficult a lot of times to even ask her to, to pay just in the sense that I don't necessarily always think that the framing comes with it. And that's, you know, the response I'm going to get. Um, and so a lot of times, yeah, it just feels easier to split it or pick it up myself, but it feels nice to hear. It yeah. was once I got there, it actually felt kind of nice to say, and I'm not bullshitting you guys here. Yeah. Stay there. I <laughs> I like seeing you, Serena, build a bridge to Nate and connect on a different level than you've connected before. I would be willing to bet that the two of you have had these intellectual conversations where you spin over and over and just get nowhere. Yeah. But just that moment with the heart pounding and having to pull yourself back two times from saying <laughs> this time, that's a real breakthrough. <laughs> Hearing yourself come to that realization. What do you realize? That... It's okay. Like, it's really okay to maybe be more generous than I am and to say it's okay for me to pay for both of us sometimes. And I think also part of, I think, what goes into my mind is like, if I pay for this nice dinner, if I pay for, you know, our bar tab, Nate doesn't even care. I think wow. seeing his reaction now shows me that I think it's a gesture that would actually go quite a long way with him, which is something yeah. I kind of filled in for myself without thinking of what it would actually mean to him. Big insight here. I'm extremely impressed with Serena. And everyone, take note of how she pointed out that she had assumed Nate wouldn't even care. But now that they finally talked about it, she realized he actually would. What is something in your relationship that you assume your partner won't care about, but you've never actually offered it? I'd like to talk, Nate, about your financial situation because that's been looming in this conversation. And you've mentioned a couple of things. You've mentioned that you come home tired at different times. You've mentioned that you don't have a lot of money right now and that you would like for that to change. Tell me a little bit about the training that you're currently in, how much you're making right now and what might change in the future. So I am a doctor. I graduated from medical school a couple of years ago and I'm currently in training to become a uh, specialist in a fairly lucrative field compared to most fields. I'm in my second year of four. Oh, how much you make? So he's going to make probably even more than 300,000 a year. Let's see. Hold on. Making now and how much will you make mm -hmm. after you're done? So I'm making about $45,000 now after residency to, you know, I'm not going into academics or anything. So to make a salary of say $300,000 is probably not unrealistic. So it's going to be like higher. As likely. you can tell from looking at me, I have a lot of doctors in my family. I'm the black sheep because <laughs> I don't have an MD. Thank and you so uh, also, I, I thank you. 
So you're going to make 300K in two and a half years. Right now you make 45. I assume that is where a lot of this financial stress comes from. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I want to make sure people understand that residents really face a very, very challenging financial situation in the short term. A lot of them are going to debt. A lot of them just cannot go out. You can't just be like, meet me at a bar on a Friday night. They're like, I literally have no money. And you're like, but you're a doctor. How can that be? And they're like, I don't want to explain this for the 50th time. <laughs> but after a few years, that all changes. Okay. Even with your heavy debt, what do you have? Like $450,000 of debt? Yeah. About something like that. Yeah. Okay. So even with that, you still make a lot of money. The key lesson here is that a high salary solves many financial problems. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I know. You've probably been taught the opposite by a bunch of finger-wagging, naysaying financial Dave experts Ramsey. who always say things like, it's not what you make, it's what you keep. Then they pull out a copy of The Millionaire Next Door, <laughs> blow the dust off of it, and they say, read this. And yes, it's true. There are people who make a lot of money and they spend it all. I've talked to some of them on this very podcast. But there are a lot more people who make low salaries and are in financial trouble. If you have the ability to make a high salary, that solves many financial problems. With a high salary, you can afford to pay off debt rapidly, you can save more, and you can invest aggressively. That's why when he says he has about a half million dollars in debt, I just shrug. All right, fine. If Nate is smart with his money, he can pay that off without it even being a huge burden at all. So I have little patience for people who spend their lives agonizing over $3 questions like the price of dessert, because I know most of us should be spending time talking about $30,000 questions. Or in the case of your salary, it can be a $3 million question over the course of your lifetime. If you want to increase your earnings, you have a couple of great options. First, identify what your dream job is, build a network that will help you land that job over all your competitors, and then build the skills of interviewing and negotiating your salary. I've taught thousands of people how to do that, which is why so many of them get $5,000 raises, $10,000, even $80,000 raises. I added a link to the dream job program in today's show notes. The second way you can increase your income is to build a side income. And you can do that by finding a side business idea, a profitable one, and then build a product or service around it. I've helped thousands of people start businesses in over 50 industries, including fitness, food, pets, cooking, and a lot more. I've included a link to my earnable program in the show notes if you want to start a side business as well. I spent the bulk of my 20s being super broke in New York as super broke 20-somethings in New York tend to do straight out of college. And so I think where this kind of shows up in our relationship is like, wow, I'm finally in this place where I'm not super broke and I actually can't afford to be like, hey, yeah, I'll meet you for drinks. Like, let me know where. Or, hey, let's go out to dinner. You know, I feel like dressing up, you know, going out, not cooking, whatever. And so I'm in that phase, but Nate's not. And so that's where the that's where the issues come up. I think it feels a bit like a cruel joke because it's like, wow, I'm finally in this place where I can you know, more or less like afford to go out and not sweat it so much, but I can't really enjoy it if I'm like, I'm not going to just, you know, table for one. Girl, if you don't drive the man away, you'll be enjoying that. And then some in a couple years, G come on. Like I could, it'd be very European, I guess, but you know, it's, I, I want to do these things with my person, obviously. Frankly, it just feels a little bit stressful because she does want to go out on weekends. And uh, the question becomes whether I sort of start a potential uh argument or something about well i can't really do that you know that is so bad it starts an argument when he says i can't afford to do that is this this girl is like some kind of la la land like huh and, and more often than not, frankly, I just kind of go along with it and it just worsens the financial burden. And, and when you say it makes the situation worse when you just go along with it. So you go, you all go out, you go to dinner or drinks or whatever. And then am I reading this correctly? Two thirds of the time, Nate, you offer to pick it up. But from your finances, you can't really afford it. Is that how it plays out? Yeah, usually offer to split and then she'll say, oh, do you mind getting it? And that conversation will essentially be like, well, I'll be unhappy if we split. But if you get it, it'll be fine and, and again as we discussed earlier i think that put it in a different light and hopefully that'll change but a lot of times yeah i do end up sort of just putting my card down and saying okay like that you know right now <laughs> what do you want to say she's just so unreasonable like you just said you're in a place where you can go out and not stress but then you go out and you drag him along and you ask him to pick it up when you know he can't afford it like this is the most unreasonable freaking person <laughs> I 
I agree. <laughs> okay. Whatever, I'll talk to you about this later, which I, I do sometimes to try and even things up. What's that conversation like when you bring up money with Serena? More often than not, it's, you know, I looked at my bank account and I really can't afford this. Could you please help me out? Uh, you know, it, often asking for like a good split, uh, but settling for anything, um, you know, even if it's a little What does that fun, feel like the conversation? Well, it feels like I have to, I have to grovel to my significant other first. You're making a little bit me of help. sound so mean. <laughs> because you, you are. are. <laughs> You're just comfortable, and it's hard for you to understand and that, that I don't want I'm this not. to be a stressor. Like I, I think it's like I want you to feel comfortable saying that. Like I don't want you to just put your card down because it's like putting a band aid over. Look at Remy's face. Over, like the situation, but not really. Well, that's why we're here, to right? The bottom of it. Yeah, we're here to get to the bottom. <laughs> of it. But it is an interesting yeah. reaction, Serena. That I asked him, "What does it feel like?" And his response was, "It feels like I'm groveling." It's very honest. Yeah, quite a haunting response. I appreciate the honesty. I, I do too. And then. You jumped in and what did you say? You're making me sound so mean. Right. And what were we talking about when you jumped in? Uh, like splitting the check afterwards. Like, nope. you know, nope. no. We were talking about what he feels like having to come oh, to you and yeah. ask for financial help. Yes. I think what I'm hearing is there's a lot of emotion in this relationship that is being ignored. Mm -hmm. A lot from both sides. But Nate is really saying like the word groveling, that's not a word you want to hear your partner say. And also something I noticed is that so yes, hidden emo hidden emotions that that are not being confronted in the relationship, and I think men uh like deal with it. Like I could see this guy going the next two and a half years in this kind of low grade misery with the finances, and he's probably thinking, okay, well. When I actually start working for real, for real, then this will be, this will blow over. So, <laughs> and then women, we don't deal with it. Like we keep, women try to figure it out, oftentimes ineffectively because the communication is not effective. So anyway. I hate that. I hate when I see that same old song and dance. You know, we've all seen it over and over. So anyway, I really hope. Anyway, let's see what comes of this conversation. In any scenario, no, it doesn't matter if they're earning zero dollars. They should not be groveling the other partner for yeah. anything. So when my partner says groveling, what should my reaction be? My reaction. Yeah. What should your reaction be when your partner says groveling? No groveling allowed. God damn. I thought I was harsh, but Serena is absolutely savage. I can imagine my kids one day coming home and saying, we got an A minus. And then I say, sit down. And I lecture them for three hours about their heritage and academic excellence and how if they don't shape up, they're going to end up in the gutter. <laughs> That's going to happen. But if Serena's kids came home and said the same thing, she would literally just point at the door and say, no roof for you tonight. Find your own food, you pathetic losers. <laughs> Man, Serena. I am inspired. No groveling allowed. Uh, no. <laughs> I, I'm thinking if I heard my partner saying, gosh, I feel like I have to grovel to Ramit. I'm like, I drop. You don't have to grovel. Yeah. Like, but he, uh, he no, does that's actually. Not either. I'm not going to tell them you don't have to grovel. My response is, oh my God, I didn't realize that you felt you have to grovel. Why do you feel that way? And what can I do so that you don't have to feel that way? It's different, right? Yeah. One is <laughs> focused on the other person. The other one's focused on me. Yeah. 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 Oh, is she coming to realize something? It's the me, 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 me show. Me, 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 me. I mean, part of being generous is looking at your partner, right? So when, when Nate's over here and he's hearing that you want the check part, it's not only about the money. It's also about feeling connected, mm -hmm. feeling taken care of for yeah. you. He's hearing that. And we're going to get to that. Mm -hmm. But what are you hearing about Nate? Um, I mean, I'm hearing that it's causing him stress to even consider splitting or asking me to cover. Yeah. Yeah. Or coming back to you after being like, Hey, I have like yeah. no money. It's yeah. like horrible. Yeah. So no, it can't be a good feeling at all. And he can't even tell you, no, I can't afford going out today. Go have fun. Like with your friends. Like he can't even do that. That's how bad it is, girl. Keep going. I guess I, didn't realize that it was affecting you on that level. 
And I also feel like she didn't care. That's how I feel. I feel like you don't actually give a shit. That, like, that's how I feel. Like, I'm getting annoyed. Like, that's how I feel. I don't know. What do you think? I'm not sure. It might be just like, um, like when you think of like a angry Asian mom, it's like, it's not that they don't care. It's that the way they care is like totally different than like what you and I, our version of I care represents. Mm, okay. Obviously, I can pragmatically understand that not having enough money to go buy something or go somewhere is not good and it probably doesn't feel very nice, but I guess I underestimated the toll it was taking on you. And I'm curious as to why did she underestimate that? Because she said that she lived that way and all her 20s, she was super broke, so she knows how it feels. So... I don't know. I just feel like there's some lack of empathy going on. I, I don't know. Maybe she just needed a little perspective change. And how it was playing into it also how you communicate with me, not just, you know, within your own brain, but also just with me as your partner. But I think like enjoying the dinner or, you know, him making the reservation, like those are all things that play into my feeling of being taken care of. Love it. Love it. There we go. That's awesome. So by identifying the feeling you want, mm -hmm. and then we can start to say, well, what does that mean? Sometimes being taken care of can be having someone pay for it, but it can also be planning it, making yeah. reservations, all that. There's so many things besides money. I love seeing the two mm -hmm. of you build these bridges. And I'm certain that this is opening up a whole different level of being able to communicate for you. But I just want to say it is totally normal for so many of the couples that I speak to to not have this type of communication. I didn't even have it with my own wife we had to go talk to somebody so that we could get new tools so that we could communicate about money. So I appreciate you both playing ball. We are definitely getting somewhere. Do you both feel that way too? Yeah, Absolutely. I really feel, this is so like cheesy, but I just want to run over and like give you a hug right now. <laughs> like, are I, you talking to him or me? Oh, both of you guys. Go, go give <laughs> him a hug. You guys each other a hug. You're next door to each other. Go okay, ahead. I'm taking a hug break. Go ahead. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> this is amazing. So they're both getting up. He's going into her room. She's got the dog Wait, in her hand. Oh my God. And he, the dog just disappeared from the frame. He, Wait, do this on camera. I can hey, tell the guy, is, the guy is so happy. I'm like the leering dude oh, watching this couple give each other a hug. <laughs> if it doesn't happen on camera, it doesn't. Oh, what a nice hug. Look at that. <laughs> I love that. The guy is so happy. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's so happy because for the first time ever... His very reasonable situation, she's finally like listening to it for the first time ever. That is beautiful. You guys are too cute. Oh, she's got to get her mic on or her headphones. She's too cute. I just dabble. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever seen this happening on this podcast. It's the first time I've ever seen a couple get up and hug each other in the middle of an episode. You guys have to watch this. This episode is up on YouTube so you can actually see what Nate and Serena look like and what it looks like when they are talking to each other. Check it out. The link is in the show notes. Now let's talk about Serena and Nate's numbers. Serena has about $20,000 invested, $10,000 saved, and $81,000 in student. I'm so done with this girl. You have $10,000 saved in the bank and you're invested 20 k I'm sure you're on time with your loans. Why are you acting all money insecure with your man for? And he's finna... Mm -mm. Oh. Let's continue. Student loans. All right, so that your total net worth, negative uh, $51,000, okay. How do you feel about that? Uh, not great. Mm -hmm. A lot of people my age, you know, have student loan debt. I have more than average. Where is she from? Where are her parents from? I wonder where she's from. I, she probably had like super, super, uh, like high demand parents. My parents, um, didn't have anything saved for me to go to college. Do you know when your debt will be paid off? So I refinanced earlier this year and I think I'm on like a 10 year plan. Okay. Um, so you're 29. Yeah. So that debt will be paid off by the time you're 39. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Nate, walk me through your numbers. So technically, I have two cars at this point. What, what uh, kind of cars? Most of the uh, a Hyundai and a Honda Civic. <sighs> my man, we can be best friends. Great cars, great choices. I love my I have Hyundai. No comments. Yeah. <laughs> no comments. All right. Moving along, your investments. Uh, so I have, actually, I might have 
more than this, but I think I have over $1,000, but give or take, in a, in a Roth IRA and about 200 in stocks, bonds, generic uh, stuff. And your debt? $450,000, estimated. Okay. What's the interest rate on that? No idea. Really? Zero idea. Uh, huh. I, we haven't been, I haven't been accruing interest because of the pause on yeah. uh, repayment. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Serena, you're not, you, you didn't suggest to Nate, like, hey, have you made a plan for your student loan debt or anything? It surprises we, you. I don't, I don't really think we talked about it. It's sort of the thing where I'm almost, and you know, I'll be the first to say this is maybe irresponsible, but I feel like it's almost something that like, I don't even see talking about, see worth talking about until he's making more money to a yeah, point where fair. it's like, he can't even really make a significant dent in it. So it's kind of something I'm voluntarily not worrying. Nate, your net worth is negative $432,800. How do you feel about that number? Mission accomplished. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty, pretty terrible, obviously. And it, why is it terrible? Uh, it's just a lot of debt. It's a lot, a lot of debt. And that's almost exclusively medical school. Um, I think maybe $27,000 of yeah. that is undergraduate. Okay. Um, okay. But, but can I come back to that? I don't care about the numbers. I care about how you feel about it. You feel, quote, terrible. Is that really how you feel? Well, it's it's one of those things where I've sort of ran a bunch of different numbers and I've contemplated my way through it and essentially came to the realization that during residency to put money in like a Roth IRA ended up being more return than paying down minimally this debt that was still accruing interest. So in addition, a lot of jobs offer... Uh, Wait, I'm not talking about your investment strategies. I'm talking about how do you... Intellectualizing this couple. I'm. Whenever this couple has a conflict, they, I'm sure they just talk for hours and hours and get nowhere. Feel about $400,000. I don't think about it. I don't think about it right now. Okay, that's more honest. Do you notice that when I ask how you feel, you often go into the tactical? Well, the tactical is why I don't think about it because I've thought about it and I'll just... It's it's out of the way for now. I can't do anything about it. I have other more pressing financial concerns at this point. Did you catch that? He did it again. Mm -hmm. A lot yep. of men genuinely do not know how to answer a question about feelings. And we see this as a recurring point on this podcast. Honestly, I know I didn't. If someone had asked me at age 19 how I felt about something, I would have answered back starting by saying, I think dot, dot, dot. In my culture, and to a large extent with men, we were not taught how to connect with our feelings. We were not even taught how to talk about them. And that's really what you hear Nate doing. What's interesting is that earlier, he did open up. He really opened up when he said, I feel like I have to grovel to Serena about money. So we know that he has feelings. Of course he has feelings. And we know that he can articulate them. But it's challenging to get him to connect with them and say them out loud. I guess what I'm saying beyond the debt number is the emotional part of your relationship both of you with money is super important and it's super neglected to not have ever used the word groveling until just now when the two of you have been together for a long time. That's an issue. And to not have been able to connect on generosity before, that's an issue. So I don't doubt that the two of you can come up with a really good debt payoff plan. You two are very smart. I have no doubt about that. But the area of opportunity is to be able to communicate about money and be honest about your feelings. And I, I, I would challenge the two of you to steer away from your natural tendency, which is talking, talking, talking. So um, let me tell you what I see when I see these numbers. Are you, what do you think I think of these numbers? You're negative 51,000, <laughs> negative 432,000. You're probably like, holy shit, these people are really chill for how bad their financial situation is. But it's like, well, he's a future doctor. She's probably just like- Bro, her parents did a number on her. I feel, I actually, now I feel really bad for her. I feel really bad for her. Her parents did a number on her. Their financial- I, okay, we haven't seen all the numbers, but I think their financial situation probably looks better than most people their age. And she is so hypercritical. I, I feel really bad for her. I do. That sucks. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't, I went through many years of my life again, where I was like struggling to make rent and student loan payments and all of that. And, you know, I very recently, like within the past like four months have been like, okay, I can pay more than the minimum now. Like I've cried on the phone with like insert loan provider here. And I just like rather not do that anymore. Um, and you know, like my, you can see like my take home and everything. So like I have like extra cash at the end of the day. Um, and we'll go into that later, but I guess that was a long winded way of saying, I don't think our situation is great. 
you know. Um, I think that when I look at just the net worth part and right. knowing your ages, for you, Serena, I think, oh, 80K at 29, that's really good. I bet yeah. you she recently got promoted and started making more money. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Creepy. And I can tell that. I can tell that. See, you see numbers mm -hmm. and I see a lifetime life. of Wild. decisions, yeah. right? And, yes. Um, and I can tell that because your income is relatively high compared to how much you have saved or invested. Mm -hmm. But that also tells me that, gosh, the fact that you've put that much away in right. probably what's a very short time mm -hmm. is very impressive at 29. And so, yeah, you have 80K of debt, but you can pay that off. You know your debt payoff date. That's impressive. Less than 5% of people know that. What? So overall, yeah. Do you know 90% yeah. of people don't even know how I'm much telling you, she had tiger mom and dad. She had parents that beat her behind when she made an A-. minus. I'm telling you. I mean, and the thing, the funny thing is like, people are like, well, when you have parents like that, you, you succeed, you do really well in life. I mean, yeah, you do. But then how, how much do you get to enjoy it? Like you're fighting with your, your fiance over like very dumb things when you should be enjoying life. Much debt they owe. That's and 95% of people do not know their debt payoff. I talked to a lot of people. Wow. Now, as for you, Nate, I think to myself, like, if I were in your position, I would be super chill about this. <laughs> Let me explain why. If I were in your position, but I had my knowledge of compound interest and income and stuff like that, this is how I would explain. It. I'd be like, yeah, I have a shitload of debt right now. But in a few years, I'm going to pay it off aggressively. And then I'm going to invest a ton. So I feel super comfortable with my decision. I did it eyes wide open. And the thing is, we know he will. How do we know he will? He's already doing it when he makes... Buck all. <laughs> He's already doing it. So we absolutely know he will. So um, it's a good position. And yeah, times are pretty tough right now. I know that. I can barely afford a cocktail. But I know that that's going to change in a few years. And I know that being partnered with Serena, we're going to do more than we can even imagine together. That's how I would look at it. Your short term is really tough. There's no doubt about yeah. that. But can I just point this out? If you describe your net worth as terrible, mm -hmm. And I asked you twice and you were like, yep, terrible. Okay. You weren't kidding. It's going to be very difficult for you to feel good about money. Mm -hmm. So our language really reveals a lot about us. And if you say, oh, I feel terrible about it. This is horrible. Then you're going to interpret every decision as terrible. And by the way, it's not going to change when you have a million dollars in the bank. You're still going to feel terrible. Okay. Or you can say, yeah, I made a calculated bet. I know my specialty. It's going to make 300K conservatively. And I'm a frugal guy. I don't need a fancy car, Hyundai, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to be fine. We are going to be better than fine. That is just a totally different set of lenses. I want to teach you how to look at a few numbers and see what's really going on. I did that with Nate and Serena. And now I think it's time for you to do it with your own money. Get my conscious spending plan from the show notes. It's free. It's a download. You will have it in your inbox in less than 60 seconds. And you can see your numbers laid out okay, easily I'm do within it. 10 to 15 minutes. You Suddenly do it, you're going to have a whole new perspective on your numbers when you use the conscious spending plan. The link is in the show notes. Serena, how much do <laughs> you make per year? Um, I make 80K before taxes. Okay, cool. And uh, Nate, what about you? You make 45? Yeah. All right, fine. So 80K plus 45. All right. I mean... That's pretty good income together, but you don't combine your incomes. So let's talk about your expenses. This is where I'm very interested. All right, we're using the conscious spending plan, four categories. Let's start with fixed costs. Yes. So your rent uh, or mortgage mm -hmm. is how much? So 12, it's 1260 combined. I pay a little bit more than half. No, it's, huh? it's 2560 no, total. Damn it, I'm terrible at math. Yes. Uh, oh my gosh, I hate... Yeah, I'm going to pause every time. Every time there's negative on themselves over nothing, I'm going to pause. Like, this is so bad. I really hope that they watch this back. I hope they watch this and hear how they're talking to themselves. Like, this is so bad. <laughs> like, you know, for your happiness and mental health, you know, you're not terrible at math. Anyway. I'm 60, so I pay a little more than half just because I make more. Nate pays 1200 to my 36, 1360. Jesus. How'd you come up with those numbers? It Nathan. was a, I know this was a juicy conversation. Don't lie to me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was a negotiation. Um, okay. Tell me, I got to hear this. So, uh, rent prices as well as everything in the last year have skyrocketed where we lived. So, uh, last year we were paying the same. We were both paying about a thousand dollars each. 
per month. And this year, our rent went up almost 30%. Uh, and I don't like that he's paying, that they were paying the same. I don't like that. I mean, if they were making the same, fine. Like, I don't know when she got her raise, but anyway. And you know. so I could not really afford to split the rent uh, at all. And so on the other hand, Serena really wanted to stay in the area that we're in. Uh, she really liked the area. I mean, I, I love the area too, don't get me wrong, but. It's this, uh, this thing she does where she's trying to drag him into her financial lifestyle is really ticking me off. How dare you? How dare you? Let me hear this. Uh, as opposed to moving elsewhere, where there would have been slightly cheaper rent, but you know, maybe not that substantial. So she wanted to stay in the area and the rent was too much for me to afford. So basically it took a long time of me saying, I can't really afford this. Can we of course. balance this a little bit in a direction based on what we make? Let me make sure I understand. So you're, you're each paying $1,000. Your rent went up. That made it very difficult for you, Nate, to afford it. <laughs> um, Serena, you wanted to stay in this particular area. So you had a back and forth and you concluded with Serena, you're paying a little bit more like $160 more per month for this. Oh apartment. no, yeah. girl, you're okay. so rude. All right. That's what do you rude. both think about how you are splitting your rent? At first I was not thrilled at the prospect of spending more when we're both splitting the apartment, but you are so you know, rude. After thinking about it, like now I'm completely fine with it and it's totally normal. And you know, I don't mind at all. Um, and it was, like, it's 150, but that's, I spent that much on my nails. <laughs> it's, it's so weird like as logical as she is if you're the one who wants to stay why don't you just let him keep the same rent he was paying because he's like freaking homeless at this point and you cover the difference because you want to stay like it's like she picks and chooses when she wants to be logical <laughs> need is correct it was 100 percent. you know i didn't want to move um i didn't want to leave the area um and so is that why you offered to pay the extra 160 a month i didn't offer it was something that nate sort of proposed <gasps> and then after she made sure that we know oh no 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 i did not <laughs> <laughs> oh my you know some back and forth i kind of was like okay i see where I want to know what's going through his head. <laughs> You're coming from. I'm I'm okay paying $160 extra. Yeah, okay. because it was it so, was like more me that was wanting to stay here. So, and I make okay. more. So it it was I I understood. How much more do you make than Nate? I would say significantly more. Hmm. I initially thought that it would be a good idea to basically take the the essential net incomes and sort of base it on that. But on the other hand, that would have put me under uh, or basically would have put all of the increased rent on her shoulders. And yes. essentially, as part of the discussion, yes, I sort of should. decided that, you know, that that would it would feel unfair. And I understood from her perspective how that would feel unfair. And so I, I definitely at some. No, I hate this. I understand this logic of, OK, we're two people. So we're using half the utilities, half the space, half I that is one way to look at it, but that is not equitable. There's a difference between equal and equitable. And, you know, especially when this is your fiance who is on a, a great path, like, come. <laughs> Wait, the, like I said, we arrived at whatever numbers we arrived at, which is about 160 more on her part. And I just took the, took the W and, and, ended the conversation but so much i like that you take the win that's a philosophy of mine take the win but i find it's like being used in a very peculiar way in this relationship like uh that's not the win i want you to yeah, take. Yeah. okay let, let's just let, let me point out a few numbers okay again these numbers just look like numbers to you but to me they tell a, a very rich story so your fixed costs together represent 78 percent mm -hmm. of your take-home pay now in my conscious spending plan do you know the number that i recommend oh my god 50 to 60 right Yes. What's that? What's that smile, Serena? I was like, I don't know. I was going to guess 40 to 50. But I was like, whatever it is, it's significantly lower than what our yeah. current combined yeah. is. Nate, your fixed costs represent 97% of your take home pay. Bro, how can not that be? Cool. Well, I spend about 600 ish dollars on 
gas, give or take, every month. You, you live far away. You have to drive. Is there anything you could do about it? Nope. And you of- and you live far away. Okay, I don't know. Maybe they live close to where she works, but... <laughs> Mm. Honda Civ- I bought a Honda Civic, which gets slightly better miles to the gallon. But yeah, uh, that's good. That's a good call, regardless. Uh, uh, and the two of you don't want to move closer to work. It will be happening after this year uh, for essentially details that have to do with my scheduling, with my program, and a bunch of nitty gritty okay. stuff. So you're going to cut back on gas expense next year. Yeah. Oh yeah. And okay. uh, also, I have housing provided for me for six months next year. Great. All right. C- can I just say, um, Nate? You're making way less than Serena, and you're paying essentially 50-50. That's the problem. Yeah. That's the reason that when you go out to dinner, Hmm? like, the two seem totally (gasps) unconnected, don't they? She doesn't. She don't want to hear that. Ah! I think they zoomed in on her finger. I know. Whoever's editing this is, is messy. Nate, you're making way less than Serena, and you're paying... Essentially, Mm -hmm. 50-50. That's the problem. That's the reason that when you go out to dinner, like, the two seem totally unconnected, don't they? The amount you pay for your apartment and then going out to dinner and all this drama happening around the check coming, but it's actually directly connected. Nate, you are spending too much for your portion of housing, and therefore you have nothing left over. No wiggle room. You can't even give Serena a straight answer on when you can pay her back $50 a month, and that's causing stress. Do you see how it all rolls back to one thing that is seemingly invisible in your finances? Yeah. It's this. Serena, let's say that my wife and I were dating and I was like, hey, move in with me. I make like twice as much as you, but we should split it 50-50. What would you say to that? Um, I don't think I would love it if it were me. Okay. Would so you- why are you doing it to him? you should be taken care of love it if it were neat <laughs> uh no okay good okay great so we we can meet there the most successful couples i see especially in situations like this where you have separate incomes etc is proportional mm-hmm. so proportional means if you're making 65 percent of the income you pay 65 percent of the joint expenses and that would probably suggest that you pay more mm-hmm. for this rent and that nate pay less how would you feel about that it's kind of like with the talking about the check, like I think I it would be really hard for me at first just because it's not something I've done ever before and not something I even, I think would have considered. Yeah. You know, wow. L- let me ask you this before you answer, yeah. before you go on. Um, let's just fast forward mm-hmm. like three years mm-hmm. and Nate's making 300, 325K. Yeah. How much should he pay for the rent? Okay, forget everything I said earlier about how I've grown up and matured and now Uh, I don't try to expose logical inconsistencies (laughs) and instead I just ask nicer questions. Forget all that. I heard this. I had to go in for the kill. Go in. Fast forward like Mm -hmm. three years Mm -hmm. and Nate's making 325K. Yeah. How much should he pay for the rent? Yeah, this is something we've talked about. I would be super weirded out. I saw his smile, babe. (laughs) Oh, he expected me to to pay 50-50 for rent. Wait, what, what are you oh, talking about? Oh, for real? Right- uh, and what if he wants to live in freaking Calabasas? Ah, girl. No, you're paying 50-50, basically. I, I know. But That's I'm not kind making, of a double standard. I know, but I'm not making that much. Like, I'm making more than Nate is now, but he's going to be making a lot more than me. You- oh, so it's a it's a gradation. Yeah. So what's the number where, in your mind, oh, it changes? I've never even thought about that, to be honest. Because it's not a number. It's not a number. Yeah. Get real, girl. I know you're about to spend five minutes intellectualizing it and we're going to go round and round. It's not a number. If you made $200,000 right now, Serena, mm-hmm. do you think you would be proactively going to Nate and saying, I should pay quadruple what you pay for our rent? Proactively? Probably not. I love the honesty. I love it. This is the kind of thing that's going to allow the two of you to connect about money. And Serena, if we can keep on this path for a yeah. second... Why not proactively? What would stop you from doing that? I mean, I think if we had, a, if we sat down and had a conversation or if Nate brought it up to me, then, you know, I think we would get to that place where it's proportional to what we're making. But I think it wouldn't be my first inclination to do that. Because? Because, because I think it's like, 
I, I mean, like a little bit is probably societal. A little bit is probably selfish where it's like, I have this money. I want to be able to like choose what I, what I spend it on. I want to, you know, go do fun stuff. I think I know One second, one second, please let me finish this. It just wouldn't come to mind at first just because I can very easily rattle off other things that are also important to me with how I spend my money. Your 401k, your investments, your travel, family, Mm -hmm. gifts, all of those things. For sure. You can always find something to put Mm -hmm. a lot of money towards. Yeah. I have to ask you this. Who's your person? Nate. Mm -hmm. And of all those things, shouldn't Nate be up there somewhere? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So far, we have talked about... Oh, I mean, oh, get it, get it, get it. Expectations with money in this relationship. We've talked about what happens when one partner earns more than the other. And in this unique situation, what's going to happen when that income flips in a couple of years? We've talked about the need to feel taken care of. We've talked about picking up checks. We've talked about double standards. But we haven't talked about how to solve Nate and Serena's questions about mm-hmm. money. So far, we've scratched the surface of what they need to both realize about the way that they've been communicating about money. But next week on part two of Uh, this conversation, I think you will be surprised at what we come Uh, to. Please remember, you can uh, watch this episode on YouTube. You can uh, see the body language of Nate and Serena. I would highly encourage you to go over to YouTube, find my channel, Ramit Sethi, and click subscribe or follow. Uh, Please also check out the show notes. I've got a survey link. I'd love for you to take that. I'm going to make it a separate video. This one is too juicy. This one's too juicy. So let me know your thoughts so far in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you vibe, make sure you subscribe and say hello in the comments so we can welcome you to the tribe. But yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do part two. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. Put the notification bell so you can know when part two comes out. And until next time, much love, much luck. Peace out. Bye.